I'm sorry, Edward puffed sadly. You wouldn't take my trucks to the quarry and now I'm running late with my passenger train. And Edward steamed away. Edward stopped and told the signalman all about James. The signalman telephoned for help and soon Salty was on his way. He pulled up alongside James. Why didn't you fill up with water this morning, matey? James told him about the queue at the water tank. I've heard you were too busy to help Edward too, said Salty. I was in a hurry, protested James. Mine is the most important job on the island. No job is more important than helping another engine, said Salty firmly. And deep down in his boiler, James knew Salty was right. Thanks to Salty, James's water tank was soon filled and he was well on his way. He knew he had to make up for lost time. Then James saw Diesel up ahead. He had broken down and looked unhappy. James wanted to tease him, but then he remembered what Salty had said. No job is more important than helping another engine, he said to himself, and even Diesel is an engine. Come on, Diesel, I'll push you back to the sheds. Pushing Diesel and pulling trucks was hard work. At last, James got Diesel to the repair yard, but he still had to deliver his coal. The wind blew, and it was getting colder by the minute. James steamed all over the island, delivering coal to the station waiting room. Everyone was pleased to see James. Thanks to him, they were all kept toasty warm. The next morning, the Fat Controller came to see James. He knew all about Edward's trucks and James running out of water. I'm sorry, sir, said James. I put my own job first. But you did learn your lesson and you helped Diesel, the Fat Controller boomed cheerfully. And you delivered your call on time. You, James, are a really useful engine. James nearly burst with pride. Thank you, sir, he said. Being really useful was better than feeling important. See, cried Percy, it is magic. It can fly. Percy raced after Toby. Until finally, Toby pulled in to Kelsthorpe Station. Percy pulled in as fast as he could. Wait! cried Percy. And Toby didn't move, but the carpet did. It flew off Toby and landed on the tracks. Help! cried Percy. My magic carpet! Gordon was even less impressed than before. Still trying to make your little job look important, he grumbled. Then there was trouble. Thomas was coming and he was on the same track as the carpet. So Percy and Gordon blew their whistles as loud as they could. But Thomas couldn't stop in time. I'll say a magic word, cried Percy. Hey presto, hocus pocus. Abracadabra, he cried, but the carpet didn't move. Please, puffed Percy, hopefully. Suddenly the wind whistled and the carpet flapped. It lifted off the tracks and fluttered onto Percy's flatbed. It is magic, gasped Gordon. And I'm going to be late, puffed Percy. Percy's driver had tied the carpet down and Percy steamed off as fast as he could. Oh. 
Percy puffed in to Maithwaite Station. The fat controller was waiting for him. Percy told him about the magic carpet. It tried to get away, he gasped, and caused confusion and delay. The fat controller laughed. Oh, 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 there's no such thing as a magic carpet, he boomed. But you, Percy, are on time and a really useful engine. Percy felt very proud. Soon the carpet was unloaded and put into place. Gordon arrived with Alicia Botti. And the flower show was an enormous success. And even though the fat controller had said the carpet wasn't magic, Percy and Gordon were not so sure. Sniffed Elizabeth crossly. I've got an urgent delivery, said Emily. But Elizabeth didn't listen. She simply went back to work. Emily blew her whistle again, but the more she blew her whistle, the slower Elizabeth seemed to go. Emily thought she would never get to Farmer McCall's. The skies were darkening and night was on its way. Thomas arrived bringing more supplies. Hello, Thomas tooted. Emily complained about Elizabeth. She won't do a thing I tell her. That's because you're a big bossy boiler, laughed Thomas. You should try asking nicely for a change. Emily didn't like being called a bossy boiler, and she didn't want to ask nicely. But it would be night time soon, and the baby calves still didn't have a roof over their heads. So Emily took a deep breath. I'm sorry I was rude, but can you help me get this timber to Farmer McCall's? Please, it's to help the baby calves. Elizabeth smiled. Why, certainly, she puffed. I'll get your track cleared in no time. Emily was surprised. Thomas was right. Asking nicely was just like magic. Elizabeth pushed with all her puff. The tower was heavy, but with a mighty heave, the track was clear. Thank you, cried Emily, and she steamed on as fast as she could. It was nearly bedtime. Emily knew the baby calves would be getting cold. So whenever there was something on the track, she took a deep breath and said, please and thank you. At last, Emily arrived at Farmer McCall's. And the timber was quickly unloaded. The barn was soon repaired and the baby calves snuggled down on a nice soft hay. Thank you, Emily, said Farmer McCull. The calves will be nice and warm now. Emily was pleased. She'd arrived on time. Asking nicely was all she'd had to do. Safely on board, Gordon pulled slowly out of the station. Gordon chuffed slowly through the countryside. He thought things were going well. But the fat controller was very cross. He spoke sternly to Gordon. What are you playing at, Gordon? He boomed. You must go quickly or the children will miss the boat, and that will never do. Yes, sir, said Gordon sadly. Remember added the fat controller. You are the fastest engine on the island. This made Gordon feel proud. This might be my last trip, he said, but I'll get the children to their boat on time. 
His wheels turn faster, his pistons pumped harder. Must be on time, must be on time, he thought. Soon he began to squeak and rattle too. Then he heard another noise. A knocking noise. But Gordon didn't care. If this was his last trip, he was going to go as fast as he possibly could. Gordon squeaked and rattled and knocked all the way to Brendan Docks. Salty and Henry were surprised. They had never heard an engine make such awful noises. Sounds like another steamy ready for the scrapyard, sneered Diesel. But Gordon didn't care about Diesel. He had made good time and the children would catch their boat. I made it, he cried proudly. Thank you, Gordon, shouted the children happily. I knew you could do it, said the Fat Controller. But why haven't you been to the repair yard? The repair yard, gasped Gordon. You have been making lots of noises, said the Fat Controller. You need to have your engine looked at. So you're not going to scrap me, asked Gordon. Scrap Gordon, boomed the Fat Controller. The fastest engine on Sodor. Who would pull the express? Gordon beamed with pride. Gordon spent the next day having his pistons polished, his axles greased and his wheels well and truly oiled. At last, he didn't make any more funny noises. Gordon was as good as new. And he felt even better. <laughs> <laughs>